G'day guys, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, my name is Cam and I make tech videos every week. And in today's video we're checking out Google SketchUp. Now what you just saw on the iPad Pro is a viewer of a model that I already created of my home studio. You might be wondering, Cam, why would I use Google SketchUp? Well, I've been using it for the past 10 years and pretty much any project that I've embarked on that it requires DIY, I've made a 3D model. So when we are building our house, I was able to model out the entire floor plan and plan and make sure the furniture that we are buying at stores was going to fit into the rooms and placement that we wanted. This also allowed me to mark out speaker placement in our home theatre to Dolby Atmos and DTSX specifications down to the millimetre because it was all 3D modelled and done to scale. Now you might have a project idea in your head and you might think 3D modeling is really hard. Well I'm here to tell you today, it is not. It's gotta be the most basic free program to give you the most control. So with that being said, let's get into it. Google SketchUp is free. Now we're gonna be using the cloud version today, but you can also get the off one installer for 2017. That was the last version that allowed you to use it for free offline. If you need to mix between the cloud, the iPad viewer and offline, you're going to need to pay for a SketchUp 2019 Pro license. Now these are now annual subscription basis, just like Netflix and everything else is these days. So if that's something you need, check all the links in the description below, but you can get it all for free by using just the web or using the 2017 offline installer. For today, we're just gonna use the online cloud version. Okay, so here we are, we've logged into Google SketchUp, we're on the web version. The first thing we're going to do is go down to the bottom right hand corner into this model info section and here you can change the format. So either your uh, imperial or metric, set what you like. I like to work in millimeters and the precision, look, we're going to be fine going down to like two decimal points on the millimeters. That is like minuscule for the scale of project that we are working on today. Okay, so really quick tour. On the left hand side, you've got your mouse, you've got an eraser for rubbing out things, you've got the paint bucket which will open up your materials. You can also go across to search and find many different textures. Now these haven't been updated since I started using it 10 years ago. So they are pretty average textures, but hey, it's free, can't really complain. You got the line tool and you can see in the bottom right corner, it's putting out the length in millimeters. So if you want to make something 600 mil, you just type 600 on your keyboard, hit enter, and it's done it. Now, what do you do if you want to rotate and look around your model? Come over to this bottom option, and here you've got orbit. So you click that, this allows you to orbit around in the 3D space of your model. So oof, our line looks pretty good. We're looking at it in 3D. Here you've got the hand, you can click and drag around, so that's just your hand. And then you've got the magnifying glass to go in and out. Otherwise, if you have got a mouse, well, you simply just middle click. And if you're a gamer, you know what's up. That's your scroll wheel. You're clicking that down. That's how you normally throw a grenade or something. So you're going to middle click. That enables Orbit Tool. If you're scrolling in and out, that's obviously zoom. And middle click and left mouse at the same time. So middle click, go to Orbit then click the left mouse, it turns it into the hand and that allows you to move left and right. So kind of like strafe around the model and it's not going to uh, orbit. So maybe to middle click first and then hit the mouse, the left click. And this, that's like your basic set. Like you, you can now make lines. Like you can literally just go, we're going with tape measure. Right, so you can take your tape measure now and we can start measuring things in our house or whatever you want. You can be like, oh yeah, I want that to be about 200 mil. And then you can, boom, draw the line, 200 mil. Boom, that's 200 mil in our model. So now we know that this length in scale in real life is that long in our SketchUp model. All right, so we've got this little 2019 diary sitting here. Let's quickly just model that up. So we've got 213 mil. So we're gonna just quickly grab the line. Go to the edge here. So the edge here is 150 mil. So we're now going across the next axis, 150. Make sure it's locking on, showing the red before we hit enter. So you just do the typing. And now we can just bring it back in home towards the red axis and across. Now we've made a rectangle. So we've done both and we just continue to click and we can orbit here. This is our 
our notebook to scale. This is exactly what it, um, I guess, looks like. Now, you and I both know that notebooks are 3D, so we can then add in this extra bit to our Z axis. You're looking at 20 mil thick there on the uh, spine of the book. Press myself there. I remember that the word's called, it's called a spine. All right. So I just naturally just went straight for this then, you would have noticed, but what you need to do is grab this one, the, the push and pull tool. The push and pull allows you to do exactly that. Click on and you can pull or push the model up and down. So now we're going 3D, straight up 3D. So it's the same as the line tool. You click, you move up, type in, enter, done. So now we've made a rectangle and that is our diary. Now you could get extra creative and start using all the other tools just experiment learn what they do and you can bring this out a little bit oh that was shocking i missed that sometimes you miss the lines as well you just need to pay attention to where it's connecting so here we go we've made a little rectangle we're going to zoom in click that drag this across boom now we've got that nice little subtle curve like you would on the spine of the book so you can start chipping away you can start you know adding in more parts but that's the that's the basics of it that's literally just 3d modeling uh in its essence you're creating shapes and then you're making them a solid and then you're pushing and pulling them up and down so what we're going to do next is we're going to grab the tape measure and input all of the specifications of the room into 3d space so first, I started off with the room. You gotta measure the length of the walls on all aspects, and then any nooks and crannies that you have, and then also measure the height of the ceiling. This allows you to then create a box out section in the 3D modeler. Now that we've got our empty room, we can add in the desktop. So we just measure out the height from the floor to then build out its width, length, and depth in 3D space. As you can see, it's just a big rectangle. Next up, we'll make its legs. Now this is a really cool tool. You find it underneath the push-pull tool and it's called the offset. And it pretty much just offsets by a certain millimeter of the exact perimeter. So if you have a rectangle or a circle shape, you can just grab this tool and create another little layer inside. And that allows you to push-pull throughout and make these hollow legs like I've got. Now I'm going to work on modeling that out and just quickly talk about the Studio 2020 series. So the 3D modeling of this room is the first step. We're gonna do some cable management on these bench tops. So we're gonna add proper rack server cable management to this deck. And then we're gonna do acoustic treatment panels. You remember when you first probably moved into your house and you walk in, you start talking and it's super echoey. It's not until you add furniture, soft carpet and rugs and elements in your space to help absorb the sound. These will help reduce the reverb in that space. For my use case of the blue wall setup, it is shocking. So these are going to help fix any reverb in my room. We'll then move into doing a wall shelf around the room and adding in some Wi-Fi smart assistant controlled RGB light. So it's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to control it with my voice with the Google Home. And to find out the rest, you have to keep watching the series because I'll unveil what is coming up in future videos. We've got about 10 projects to try and knock out before 2020. Consider clicking subscribe anytime that you like throughout this video. If you want to follow along on this DIY journey, maybe you want to copy some of the projects for yourself and get some ideas, or just have a sticky beak and see what's going on, that is fine. Just click subscribe and you'll be notified when the new videos come out by hitting the bell icon. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is the 3D model that I ended up with. So you can see the room is done in pretty good detail. We've got the desks, we've got the, the drawers here, we've got the chair. You can see the acoustic panels that I was talking about. Now these are gonna be mounted up on the wall and they're all done to scale to allow me to see how they'll fit in the space. Uh, here we've got the little shelf that I was talking about and a couple of little knickknacks sitting along them up there. Now you might be wondering, wow well, Cam, how did you make such a nice keyboard? Like that is really, really uh, well done. Well, it's actually, these are models done by the community on SketchUp. So if you want to access them, you go over to the right hand side to your components and you can actually search the 3D warehouse. So we can type in car, you can do a search and you can grab a car and go, yep, sure. Let's chuck that right in the middle of the studio and it will import 
It's actually probably gonna freeze it because uh oh they have not done this to scale. Oh that's I'm regretting my decision of trying to put this in my model. Or oh, that's a whopper. It's freezing my PC a bit. Uh this guy has definitely not done his car to scale, because his car is the size of my house. <laughs> But as you can see, you can just chuck things straight into your model from the components. Now, if you need to build them yourself, this is how I build out my model. So you can see, this is the insulation that will go into the acoustic panels. Here is the wood frame that we'll build over the top of them. And here is the chamfered edge, um, as well as the fabric that would be stretched over to give it that gray look. Now repeat the process over here on the square ones. I've also thought I'll try without the chamfered to see what the look looks like. Now, that's exactly what you do with the three models you can look at things and see how they'll outlay before you commit to obviously producing and manufacturing whatever you're doing so what this allows me to now do is go out here and I can measure and take out how wide I actually used of the models so that's seven 670 mil wide for that acoustic panel so I know that I'm going to need at least four lengths of that then we can then tally up how much wood and resources were used in the 3d model to then go and buy and purchase that from the store now, of course, you can hand draw all of your designs and your plans. No one's stopping you from doing that. But I think this is a lot better visually for me, at least, being able to uh, see a 3D model of the plan of what I'm going to make. Now, with the information that I gave you today, you're able to actually start 3D modeling. Remember that all 3D models start with a rectangle, then you move into polygon. So if you want to take that next step larger, go check out Blender. It's a much more pro level 3D modeler, but I suggest you start off on SketchUp first, get your head around 3D modeling, and then move into Blender. Now, if you're enticed by the Studio 2020 project, make sure you click subscribe so you can follow along, and also check out the videos clip here and here. And then Bruce and I will see you in one of them. All right, as always, thanks for watching.